I'm Daniel, this is Asheville, and today I'm gonna collect some custom bespoke 2012 Olympic broadcast containers before they send them for scrap. It started off a day like any other. I was in the yard working and all of a sudden my phone started popping off. I started getting loads of messages. Now I get tagged in the sale of lorries, bins and containers in marketplaces all over the world, but these were different. They were not normal containers and they appeared to be free. So I checked out the original LinkedIn post. Going for scrap or could be yours. Sounds like these guys want rid of them. The post says they were built to a high standard in 2012, used as broadcast studios. Of course, 2012 was the London Olympics. So these must have been used there. After the Olympics, two of the studios were modified into luxury front of house structures. Now, I like luxury. They came with Liga patio decks. Now, I don't even know what that means. I had to Google Liga and I, I couldn't find what it meant. But VIP, that's definitely good enough for me. I saw other people tagged in the post, so I thought I need to act fast. So I messaged the guy on LinkedIn. He replied and told me that I was 11th in the queue. When did 11th win anything? If I'm in a raffle trying to get a pair of trainers and I'm 11th, I'm leaving because I know that I don't stand a chance of winning. I was deflated. But I got a message back a few days later and everybody who had had a look was a tire kicker. Everybody either wanted to take one or two containers, but they wanted someone who was going to take all four in one hit. Now the star group were going to provide a crane and the taker had to provide the transport. So it made sense that they didn't want to get the crane in on multiple occasions. The star group live seemed to be a high end production company delivering all types of setups for live events. Now I really want these containers. Now the containers are six meters square, which is roughly 20 foot about the size of a boxing ring. However, for transport, they're split into two pieces, which are three meters by six meters. Now I agreed to take all four in principle, but first I had to go up and see what they look like. So off to bed for I drove. When I saw them, I had second forks. They were huge. Well, like, where am I gonna put them? The guy didn't wanna be filmed, so I just had a quick look around for any major showstoppers. I didn't wanna look rude with a close inspection like I was looking a gift horse in the mouth. Bit of water damage here, ceiling collapse in there, rear completely missing on one of them, but love the big glass fronts and how they joined together. Thanked them for their time, left, then called him and agreed to take them. Next, they had to book a crane, arrange a day, I borrowed a trailer and used my tractor unit. Now, if you follow our weekly videos, you'll know we have already collected these. We had to arrange a movement order. Now that's a legal requirement in the UK when you're transporting something what is referred to as an abnormal load. This is when the vehicle or load is more than three meters wide. <laughs> Now width is one thing, but height is another thing altogether. We had to double check this and we had to take into account the height of the low loader and ensure that we could make it underneath the bridges. we put the Olympic container on top of the low loader, it measured a total of 4.95 meters. We secured the units and strapped them down with five ton ratchet straps. We only got underneath the bridges on the motorway by millimeters. The viewing platforms also split in half. We used the roll-on roll-off with the flatbed on the back. This was able to transport all of it in two trips.
the distance, we could only do two journeys in one day. So once day one was complete, we started out for day two. Day two went slightly smoother because the crane operators and our team got to know each other quite well. The four containers are now safely in the Asheville yard. Time to take a closer look. First thing you notice from the offload is that we have good structural integrity, which is fantastic. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like aesthetically, because once the structure's in place, we can reclad everything around it. So the points where we lifted were lifting eyes, we screwed in ourselves and they took the weight of the entire unit when we were lifting it and we didn't see any bowing. So we didn't see it moving. And when we put them in place, they lined up fairly well. Normally with these containers, we see corrugated steel on the outside, but this doesn't have it. Uh, we have sort of like a plasticky kind of finish. People see dilapidated old um, containers need to be scrapped coming down with tooth decay. You know what I see? possibilities. I still can't work out if these are made bespoke or if this is something that's made for the television and broadcasting industry. Because uh, I have seen containers uh, which have come with uh, windows, but I've never seen windows which are like this at this sort of angle. They're also all double glazed. Uh, they have good quality frames, but whatever I use them for, I don't think it's gonna be for television broadcasting. Not yet, anyway. I mean, it does look like it's falling apart, but again, the structure is perfect. We can actually see parts of the steel frame button up against each other. The walls look like plasterboard on first inspection, but on a closer look, is it just because it's damp? This looks like a form of cement board. Looking at the wall, I can see a buildup of ply. And then on top of the ply, we have this sort of cement board. And then we have a plastic sheet. And in between the plastic sheet, we have these, sort of like the thresholds you might find in your house. Looking at the floor, I can't work out if that's a ply or a chipboard and then a lino. That runs all the way to the walls and then the skirting is sat around that. Inside, the window frames look good. Like, this is cool, look at that. The ceiling has managed to get kind of wet, but I'm looking at the structure, I can see steel, and then underneath the steel, they've put a timber batten, and then they've attached the ceiling uh, to that, and there is also rock wall insulation. All the electrics on the ceiling are um, hidden within the recess. We can see all the trunking along the walls here. I assume this is where they would have desks in the beginning. We have our fuse board and we have our connections here. These brushes stop the elements from coming into this area. So you can run a cable into here and plug it straight in. And we have two air conditioning units and two outside. I'll need to get my friend who does air conditioning to have a look at this, because I don't know if this is running on the old gas system that we're no longer meant to use. And I believe 
This system above, this is used to hang cameras or props, possibly lighting. You can see some of the history in this building. I did try to read the whiteboard. Something about feeling and condition and yeah. Container number two. Ah, this one, I was about to say looks in better nick, but I've just realized we have two panes of glass gone here. They've used ply to close it off. Not a problem because this glass isn't curved. Um, we can just have some units made relatively easily, but the floor has caved in here. Maybe we can see some more telltale signs of what this is made out of. Actually looks to be, looks to be a chipboard, but a thick one. This is definitely lino. We've lost a bit of the wall here. And once again, we can see the construction of this is relatively strong. And clearly whoever was working here previously was an artist. This looks like it's an exact copy of the first one we had a look at. Let's go and have a look at the next one. Ah, this unit has a shutter on the front. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lift the shutter. Hopefully it is electric, but this one again is a little bit different. See this red light out here? I don't know if this is something for emergencies or this red light means on air. Perhaps um, if you're sitting in these and you're looking out at the Olympics and it's the 100 meter final and Bolt is about to cross the finish line and break the record, in here the people are being filmed for their reactions and this light means on air. I don't know. Number three. That is the smoothest door thus far. And this container is fresh. This one is in the best condition. Right, let's see if we're gonna lift that. How am I gonna lift this up? Right, how's this work? I can't see any electrics. Oh wait, hold on, here we go, here we go. We have a remote control. Obviously we have no electric in here. Having it here, but not here or here, makes no sense. So I think we're gonna remove it. Number four. They actually call it number two, but for me, this is number four. Okay, well, it's locked, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Just like a curtain side of lorry. Now, it's gonna be rather dark in there. Hold on. Okay, right. Let's see if we can open this up. Ah. What were they using this for? And what could I possibly use this for? Again, we got the same setup, it's replicated, and this one doesn't have any walls falling apart. The floor is in fantastic condition. It's this good, bearing in mind that two sides of it are completely open. I also have, um, they call them VIP viewing platforms. These two fit together and those two fit together and they actually go on top of the units. I believe when they were entertaining or when they wanted to go and have a better look or when they needed to film further into the distance, they had some temporary stairs in place and they would go on top. Now, these units can be put together in multiple configurations. So I could put them all side by side or I could stack one on top of the other and then have these viewing platforms on the top of those. So I would have two and two on top of those. So they would theoretically be three stories high. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but one thing I can tell you is if I do decide to stack them, the one with a completely open side, that would be on the ground floor. Now there is a little bit of a time constraint here uh, because we haven't sealed it, these will be letting water in. So basically the floor and all the walls you can see, they're gonna get damaged and they're gonna fall apart. But when we do do the work, we're gonna completely strip it back. Obviously we're gonna keep the fantastic structure because of its structural integrity and we're gonna build around that. I think we're gonna have a build up internally of 100 mil insulation, ply, plasterboard, we're gonna plaster it and then we're gonna have our bespoke finishes because no matter what we do, 
we're going to have these in a high-end finish. All our electrics and plumbing will be hidden within the walls as well. I wouldn't use any trunking within these units. And don't get it twisted. I am not a hoarder or a scrap collector. These new would be somewhere in the region of £10,000 each. So we have made a massive saving getting them in. Now it's time to put the thinking cap on, possibly use some 3D rendering to go through all the different options we can have. Some floor plans with six by six so we can work out exactly what we can do with the space and come up with a fantastic idea so we can put these to use. When I first got these, I thought new offices. But now I've got them, I'm not so sure. With everything we've got going on, I'm thinking of possibly making them into a high-end production area with sets and acoustic walls. Possibly I can make them into a show area for kitchens and bathrooms, and basically people we work with can come and choose all the fixtures and fittings in their home. But then again, if we're going more down the home automation, home cinema route, I could make them into demonstration areas so people could see all the control they could have in their home. Let us know in the comments what you think we should do with these bespoke containers. Thanks for watching. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video of us refurbing an old shipping container to create my new office. And click here to see a video of us collecting a shipping container full of our merchandise from the shipping port. I wonder if I should make this glass mirrored like one of those interrogation rooms.